Well, here we are back again with the JVC video corrector, model JXC7. And there it is, and I uh, have it on the workbench. We're going to take a look at some of those modifications, and we're going to see uh, if, uh, if they are useful, if we can get them to work, and uh, if or if not, we're going to remove them. Now the first uh, thing is, uh, when I got the unit, there was this uh, this red piece stuck in the in the headphone jack like that. Well, it just uh, happened to uh, slide into there. What this really is is a little uh, is a little turning knob for this uh, potentiometer on the side on this additional modified circuit board, and uh, that is actually the first thing I'm going to take care of, as it seems. Uh, what it, uh, what's going on is the signal goes from the video output into this circuit. The circuit then does something with the signal. I have no idea what what this uh, thing does, what this adjustment does. And it then goes out into the DIN jack, into uh, two channels of the DIN jack. And the DIN jack is actually uh, these two red wires uh, are supplying some sort of a voltage, some kind of uh, power to this uh, circuit right here. So that is totally useless because uh, this modification completely relies on whatever was once hooked up to the DIN jack. So I'm going to take that all out. Well, as you can see, I got the uh, weird addition for the video part removed. Turns out it was in fact hooked up to uh, this unit's internal power supply uh, to this uh, transistor here and to this uh, to the rectifier part right there. Now there are still there is still something else hooked up to it that's why they are still wires but um, anyway this was done quite nicely it was easy to uh, to remove everything and uh, here is a unit, and uh, I don't know. As you can see, we don't have any active components on here. Some uh, capacitors and resistors. Little, what is that? The diode right there. Oh, it's a Zener diode, right there. But uh, and this potentiometer, and side of that, not much. So uh, don't know what this uh, was supposed to be. I guess I'll never find out because obviously I don't know what uh, what was once hooked up to the DIN jack. Anyway, let me now hook this thing up to uh, amplifier and uh, audio source so we can find out what all the other additions are doing. Right, as you can see I have the unit hooked up to a bunch of stuff which is right up there and um, I was able to, uh, well, find out a little bit more. Now, first of all, it seems like uh, these circuits, these additional circuits, are putting quite a bit of a load onto the power supply because things are getting pretty warm. So, uh, well, I guess that was uh, one thing that the designer of this all did not took into consideration that uh, he was putting an additional load onto the power supply. This is, this is getting really warm. Anyway, um, was not able to find out what this does. This is a circuit that uh, that is hooked up to the output of the uh, of the uh, unit record output, one of the channels, and uh, it has a power switch, but it does not have an output. So uh, my guess is that it is some kind of a filter that um, filters out something, and um, that uh, you know just kind of shorts a part of the signal out to, to ground so that uh, you know you can just hook it up to one point and you don't need an output or anything like that. Uh, that's my guess. I, uh, well, I'm probably going to go and check it out with the uh, frequency generator a little bit. Maybe I can uh, find out a bit more about that. Maybe a low cut filter or something like that. Although uh, <laughs> if it was I certainly wasn't able to uh, to notice it. I was playing music, so uh, if, uh, if this would make a change, it uh, would have been apparent. Anyway, this circuit right here, um, well, in the first video I made about this unit, the unboxing video, uh, I already thought this may be an echo generator, and guess what? It is. 
I'm sorry to say, but this this really isn't a very good echo unit. I guess this is just simple technology, and they uh, it just doesn't. Uh, it's just not able to uh, cause enough of a delay. I'm able to demonstrate it. Um, I have my uh, little microphone with a built-in preamplifier hooked up to the input right there, and um, if I speak up to the microphone. Well, you should be able to hear it. Uh, it causes some kind of a delay, but uh, certainly doesn't really sound like an echo. And uh, this right there, this knob adjusts the delay, and I can just quickly do that. Well, this is like uh, halfway, and uh, well, it doesn't seem to make too much of a big, huge difference. But I uh, guess you're able to hear it. Now I have it turned down all the way. You can hear there is no more delay. And uh, well, this this right there uh, bypasses the circuit. As you can hear, it uh, the signal does get quite a bit louder. So this also does take up a bit of uh, the signal level. Anyway, um, I am going to take this out because for well for one reason uh, for one thing. Um, I'd, uh, I'd much rather have this in a separate unit so that I can use it for, for different things instead of having it in here where I'm just never ever going to use it. And uh, the other thing is, of course, it only works for one channel. So, you know, for as long as you're not using a microphone or anything, it uh, it's kind of pointless. Also, uh, music through this thing just sounds like rubbish. It, uh, it doesn't add an echo, it just makes everything sound choppy and rough and weird, so... Uh, it uh, It's a nice circuit, but it's not uh, not sitting in the right spot. So I'm going to measure what kind of an input voltage it gets, and uh, then I'll take it out and use it in something else. And, uh, well, as for that thing, that does require some further experiments. Okay, back again, and uh, man oh man, it uh, <laughs> it really starts looking empty inside of there. Here we have the uh, wannabe echo unit. It's uh, it's an ELV design. You can kind of see the label right there. So this uh, this was a kit that the original owner got for this. And there it is. Might be doing something with it operates on 12 volts, so that's nothing special. Uh, as for this mystery circuit board right there, I'm going to take it out too. Uh, for one thing, it uh, once again, it only operates for one channel. And uh, Oh, by the way, removing the echo unit re really was simple. I clipped the two wires coming from the power supply that was coming out of there. That's going to go now as well. And uh, the other thing I had to do, the external jack, the one channel, this connection tab had been clipped apart, so I simply soldered that back together, and that was it. It was that simple. Really nice. Anyway, as for this thing, um, as I already said, it's only for one channel, so not usable for stereo, and I do intend to use this as a uh, stereo uh, device. and. Uh, it, uh, it, well, I tested it with a frequency generator right there. Should probably turn that off. Um, it's not a high pass filter, it's not a low pass filter, it's not a limiter. I have absolutely no idea what this is supposed to be. Uh, the only thing it, uh, it seems to do is to, uh, add, or, well, how should I say? It seems to add some harmonic distortion to the signal. <laughs> and uh, that's, of course, something we don't want uh, to have. So, just going to take that out, too, and uh, then this unit is going to be back to normal. And there it is, with all the modifications removed, of course, except for all the holes that the previous owner drilled. Can't remove those. But there it is, and it does work. I have it hooked up to a VCR right there, old Panasonic VCR, and I have a uh, television right there. And tested it with some old VHS cassettes, and it really does work very well. Um, 
surprise, surprise, none of the potentiometers are scratchy. And uh, this enhancer, it's basically a sharpness adjustment. Just a little bit makes, uh, makes those old VHS cassettes look a lot better. But uh, if you turn it up too far, it just makes everything look weird. The uh, thing I don't like is this color um, part. Uh, I would have preferred to have separate on and off switches for color and color balance because the color level, well, that, uh, that might be an interesting adjustment to play with. The color balance, however, I find to be far too sensitive. I mean, you just, you just touch it a tiny little bit and uh, the color, the, the picture goes all red or green or blue or whatever. So, uh, microphone input has an automatic level control, so uh, no separate adjustment required for that. And, um, yeah, take a bit of a look inside. I'm not going to demonstrate it. I uh, don't think those, uh, <laughs> those cassettes contain the appropriate material for that. I mean, uh, I guess Hitchcock is very well copyright protected. <laughs> Uh, as you can see, we do have some parts. I guess that's a secret part right there that you're not supposed to open up, some sort of a patented affair. We have this uh, ship right there, made by Mitsubishi, of all companies. I mean, I, you'd expect Matsushita or a company like that, but not Mitsubishi. Of course, they, uh, they were part of the video market back then, I think kind of a separate circuit board. Another Mitsubishi chip right there. Uh, power supply is an epic fail. This uh, this transformer just... It's, it's so hot you, you can't touch it anymore. It, that's an epic fail. And uh, this voltage regulator right there, it also gets pretty darn warm. It does have a pretty, pretty big heatsink, but uh, that doesn't help much. So that's, that's kind of sad. It does have a little line filter right there, which is kind of interesting. And uh, well, that's it, basically. So uh, there you have it, the JVC little JX-C7.